Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If we want to have the life that Jesus died to give us, then we can't act like ordinary fleshly human beings who just do what they want to and treat people however they want to. Today we're in the second chapter of Philippians and Paul starts out in the first four verses and he says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. So, what do we get out of that? Well, if we just read over it, probably not too much, but Paul is basically saying here, so if you want to encourage me, if you want to bring some comfort to me, if you want to participate in the spiritual work that I'm doing, if you have any real affection for me or any sympathy for me, the one thing you can do for me that will make me really, really, really happy and complete my joy is if you will just get along. <laughs> so we're going to talk about a couple of really important things today. We're going to talk about how to get along unity and how important it is to get the strife out of our lives. Now, when I said the word strife, some of you don't even know what that word means. I had somebody ask me recently, what is strife? Well, strife is bickering, arguing, heated disagreement, but it's something else that is very dangerous. It's an angry undercurrent. And you know what an angry undercurrent is? It's when everybody is smiling at each other Praise the Lord, brother. Glad you're here. Thank you, Jesus. But you're gossiping about them behind their back, or you, you know, you really don't like them. I, I'm not surprised at all that the world is not impressed by us. We, as Christians, must lay aside our pride Come on. Our pride and our vanity. And we have to learn to stop fighting in our homes, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our schools about things that really, when you take a look at it in light of eternity, are just so petty. So totally, completely petty. You know, if you've been married more than 20 years or say, who here has been married more than 30 years? Okay. Now, how many of you can remember things that you argued about year one, two, three, four, and five that you look back now and think, how stupid? No, only four or five people that have been married that long have realized that? Well, I might have to change my message. I mean, so many things that Dave used to do that made me so mad, and now I think they're funny. All those things that we think drive us crazy about a person is really what makes up that person. And we love them as a whole, but we try to pick everything apart that they do. When we first started our ministry, God said, I'm going to tell you three things I want you to do, and if you do them, I'll bless your ministry. And every one of these was news to me. I didn't even really fully understand what they were. But he said, do what you do with excellence. Be a person of integrity, first thing he said. And basically, being a person of integrity means you keep your word. So even in the very beginning, what God put on my heart is if you've taken a speaking engagement from, say, a small church, and all of a sudden you've committed to them, but you get a huge opportunity to speak in a big conference, I want you to keep your word to the first people.
So it's things like that from the very beginning, from the foundation of our ministry, God was dealing with us about truthfulness and keeping our word. And he said, do what you do with excellence. I talked a little bit last night about excellence, being an excellent person, somebody who always goes the extra mile. And being excellent or doing something with excellence doesn't mean extravagance. Some people think if they don't have a boatload of money, they can't do things with excellence. But all it means to be excellent is to take what you have, however little that might be, and do the very, very best that you can with it. Even if you have an old car, you can keep it clean. Amen? If you're gonna roll down your window, your car window at a stop sign and throw your trash out, get the fish off your bumper sticker. <laughs> Amen. If we would just follow one thing the Bible says, and we even call it the golden rule. <laughs> I guess that phrase means, hey, this is like the most important thing. And it basically is so simple. It says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What would happen in a family or in the church if people would just treat other people the way they would want to be treated? <laughs> or not say anything about another person that you wouldn't want somebody to say about you. Each one of us is responsible to maintain peace in our lives and as much as is possible to be a peacemaker. Now here's what I'm gonna tell you and this is very important. We don't hear a lot about the anointing today but when I first started coming into a really strong walk with God, teaching on the anointing was abundant. And the anointing is basically the, the presence of God and the power of God on your life to accomplish something. When you're anointed, you might say you're well-oiled and it, there's a flow in your life. Everything's not hard, but hard things become easy when you work under God's and with God's anointing. How many of you are with me so far? Well. To be honest, because I've been doing this such a long time, I can pretty much tell within a few minutes if God's anointing is on something or if it's not. And if it's not, I just start backing off because I've lived long enough now to know that if it's not anointed by God, you are gonna be struggling and frustrated and fighting with something all the time. And one of the things keeps the anointing is unity. Psalm 133 says that where there's unity, there's blessing and anointing. And we'll go through the scripture a little bit later. But I really want to establish this point with you that Philippians is considered to be the epistle of joy. Paul mentioned joy 19 times in the four chapters of Philippians, and he mentioned the mind or thoughts 16 times, indicating that you're not gonna have joy if you don't do the right thing with your mind. And so we have to be very careful and wise how we think about people, how we judge people. My goodness, we are so bad about judging things that we don't know anything at all about. We don't have any idea what that person's been through or what they're going through. You know, unless we start getting along, the world is not gonna be impressed by us. And you can't even hardly find two people that can get along, let alone a whole church full of people. I read a story that I hope was a joke, but about two people who got stranded on an island, and they were both Christians, 
And so after a while, they built a small little church because they wanted to worship together. And before long, there were two churches on the island <laughs> instead of one. And when they were rescued, they said, why do you have two churches for two people? They said, well, we couldn't get together on our doctrine, so I go to this church and he goes to that church. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to do everything that you can to get along within your family. Make keeping strife out of your family something that is very, very important. Teach it to your children. There's so many people today that are mad. If I asked today how many people in here are angry at somebody, you would be shocked. <laughs> and you came with your bumper sticker and your Bible, <laughs> and you're taking notes, and you're singing the songs, and yet you're... You're breaking one of the most important things that the Bible says, which over and over says, forgive, 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 forgive. Let it go. Leave it. Give it to God. He's the one that will bring vengeance. Come on. Aren't you tired of being mad about something all the time? And I hope this comes across sounding right, but we need to toughen up a little bit, you know? Well, you hurt my feelings. You didn't, you know. No, oh, get over yourself. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I'm insecure, and that hurt my feelings. Well, mm. grow up. Get over it. <laughs> so Paul said, listen, if you really want to do something for me, <laughs> If you really appreciate all the hard work that I've put into your life, then get along. Well, Paul was only displaying the heart of God. And I believe that God wants to say to us today, will you please make a stronger commitment than ever before to do your absolute utmost to just get along with each other? To stop fighting, to stop criticizing, to stop judging, Amen? Amen? And don't listen to the stuff either. Here's just a few little handy, helpful things about how to get along. First of all, believe the best instead of the worst. Now that right there can just... I was going through something last week with somebody, and, and I realized I was believing the worst about every situation. And the Bible says that love always believes the best of every person. Instead of assuming that somebody was out to get you or they hurt you on purpose, why not just say, I, they've probably got something going on in their life and don't, acting out of their own pain, they didn't even mean to hurt me. Be quick to forgive. <laughs> Come on, don't you leave here today mad at anybody. You might, you might have even come with somebody you're mad at. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dave and I used to go to church, and we'd, I'd be mad at him almost every Sunday. The devil would stir something up, and I'd get mad at him. And we'd fight and argue all the way to church. But let me tell you, when we got to the front door, we got the church face out and put it on. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I feel the Spirit. I can remember standing next to Dave, mouthing the words on the overhead to what I was calling worship, <laughs> and thinking, if he thinks I'm cooking him anything to eat today, he's got another thing coming. As far as I'm concerned, he can starve. And we call that worship. Wonder why things aren't working, why there's no anointing, and you know, why we've always got trouble with the devil. <laughs> Come on, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't, get, don't give the devil any such opportunity. 
Those of you that are mad in here today at somebody and you won't forgive them, all you're doing is just playing right into the devil's hands. <laughs> well, you just don't know what they did to me. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yes, nobody wants to be hurt. And when I say it doesn't matter, I don't mean that I don't care that you're hurting. But I mean, God didn't say in the word, you must forgive except on these occasions. <laughs> Is there anything that God won't forgive you for? And does he have a limit on how many times he'll forgive you for it? <laughs> so we're supposed to behave like him. If we want to have the life that Jesus died to give us, then we can't act like ordinary, fleshly human beings who just do what they want to and treat people however they want to. My, this is better than I thought it might be. Be the first one to say, I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> Gotta let that soak a minute. <laughs> say you're sorry even if you don't think it was your fault. Now, I'm not saying that there's not certain truths that we need to stand up for and stand our ground even if it does cause an argument, but I'm talking about all the petty, silly, goofy stuff that we argue about and fight about that don't even make any sense. When I look back at, I mean, I used to get mad at Dave and wouldn't talk to him sometimes for three weeks in the very beginning of our marriage over some silly thing like he went and hit golf balls on a day when I wanted him to stay home and dote on me. Okay, here's another one. Be willing to be wrong even if you're pretty sure you're right. <laughs> I told you yesterday, Dave hurt his back and he actually hurt it three times in a row. He was doing something that was, no, it was three. See? <laughs> How many of you are married to somebody that just disagrees with pretty much everything you say? Just. Okay, I'm working on a new book. Now listen. And I'm gonna title it, Let the Man. Let the man be right. <laughs> oh, you're bucking up against that one, I can feel. I mean, some women just went. Let the man have the remote. Let the man drive however he wants to drive. Don't. Right, this is how you stay married. This is the reason why Dave and I are still married after 52 years. Do you know that being right is highly overrated? And a lot of our fighting is just over who's right. And so even this thing with his back, I know that his back went out on him three times. And now he swears it was twice. And so we started last night, he said it was twice. I said, Dave, it was not, it was three times. Remember this time, he said, no, it was twice. And finally I thought, Come on, ladies, if you have to, just clamp your hands over your mouth and run out of the room. You know the main reason why I've learned to shut up? I want my anointing. I can't afford to lose my anointing over arguing with somebody over who's right about some silly thing like which direction to go to the hardware store. <laughs> or who a certain actor is on TV. 
Come on, I can remember staying up till midnight, not getting any sleep, just so I could prove to Dave. <laughs> Is anybody out there? All right. You know how hard it is to just say, well, I, I think I'm right, but I may be wrong. You know, I, I could be wrong, and I'm sorry. I mean, that just about kills you. <laughs> you feel the pain ripping through your soul. <laughs> well, don't you? But do it for God. <laughs> Paul said, look, if you want to make me happy, get along. And God is saying to you through my mouth today, if you want to make me happy, get along. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse inspiratie? Inspirerende gedachten levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. They know what abuse is. They know what trauma is. They know what it is to struggle with identity. They know what it is to face conflict in their lives. They know what it is to struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness. And Joyce's story and her experience is so particularly relevant to them because they understand that, hey, this lady knows my context. I, I, I might not be able to speak her language. I might not be able to understand her country or her, her culture. But she knows my language of pain and abuse and hurt. And her testimony in their lives gives them hope for their own lives. If, if it can happen for that lady, it could happen for me. Being committed. Being committed is very important. Mobile phones are being used by almost everyone on the continent. In fact, there are more mobile phones on the continent of Africa than there are people at the moment. Uh, so this is a really exciting platform, and people are accessing the internet. Well over 85% of people uh, through their mobile phones first. So we've got several pages recently that have been opened up in Nigeria, uh, several that have been opened up in Ethiopia, several in uh, uh, Kenya as well, and we're getting exciting responses from that. So it's one way that we can communicate directly to people uh, on a regular basis, but at the same time, where there are physical needs, we respond particularly to those through feeding programs and water wells and anti-human trafficking world work and skills development programs for young girls that prevent them from being sold into child marriage and secure their education for the rest of high school. I think for me, the thing that really touches my heart is in the midst of all the numbers, because we do, we work with some uh, crazy numbers and I think we get blown away uh, listening to some of the reach of people. Um, I mean, you know, the millions and the thousands and the hundreds of thousands, those figures that come back. Uh, what always catches me off guard a little bit and gets me uh, overwhelmed is when you have those one-on-one -on -one encounters with people. And each and every one of them has a unique story. Each and every one of them uh, has a unique uh, set of challenges that they've got to overcome, a unique set of pain. Uh, but God's particular love for each individual in each country, in each culture, in each language is what blows me away. Wilt 
Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl/shop.